My name is Tara Cordy Simpson, and welcome to the Biology 12 video on nucleic acids, part of Unit C. The key ideas we're going to be discussing today are how nucleic acids, polymers, are information molecules. The second idea is that ATP is a type of nucleotide monomer that provides energy for all the cellular processes. The vocabulary that we're going to go over before we get started today are just some key terms that you need to be familiar with to understand the video. Nucleotide is a monomer of nucleic acids, so a subunit or building block of nucleic acids. DNA is a polymer or a complex molecule which carries genetic info in the nucleus. RNA is a polymer that is used to create or make proteins in the cell. And finally, ATP is a monomer, nucleotide, that provides energy for chemical reactions and transport of molecules. Okay, let's get started. Nucleic acids is the third biomolecule that we're going to be going over in Unit C. The function of nucleic acids, as I said before, is to provide information. Also, ATP provides energy. The monomer of nucleic acids is nucleotides. So many nucleotides make up a nucleic acid. All nucleic acids are composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphate, which are the elements from the periodic table. Some examples of nucleic acid that we're going to be going over in this unit are DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And here is a picture of that up there. We're going to be going over RNA, ribonucleic acid, and there is the single strand of RNA. And finally, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And there's a quick image of that there for you with the three phosphate groups. Okay, let's begin with the building blocks. Nucleotides are the monomers or building blocks of nucleic acids. So when we add many nucleotides together, then we would create a nucleic acid. The structure of nucleic acids is broken down into three parts. First of all, we have the phosphate group. Then we have the pentose sugar. And then finally, we have the nitrogenous base. And the base contains element nitrogen. That's why it's called nitrogenous. Now the eyeball hint, how do we recognize a nucleic acid or nucleotide as we're looking at a whole bunch of biomolecules? So here's your hint. First, we're going to start off by drawing the phosphate group at the top. And then we're going to come down and look for a little house. There's our house with the roof. And that is the sugar and finally the nitrogenous base out to the side here. So that is the main form that you're looking for when you're looking to recognize what it, that a nucleic acid is present. Okay, on to DNA, one of the main types of nucleic acids. So before I start drawing everything, let's remember a nucleotide plus a nucleotide is going to form DNA. So a monomer plus a monomer is going to form a polymer. So I'm going to draw this out for you just to help you recognize what's going on. So I'm going to draw a nucleic acid. There's our phosphate group. And here's the house. Oh, there's the roof. Doesn't look too great. And then here's our nitrogenous base. Okay, then we're going to draw another nucleic acid, or sorry, nucleotide. And we're going to draw the, the phosphate group. Here's the house and the base. Now, when we add two nucleotides together, then we're going to form some DNA. So there's the phosphate group, there's the house, and there's the nitrogenous base. Now over here, the nitrogenous base is going to join up with this other nitrogenous base. And there's our house, and there's our phosphate group. So we've got two nucleotides joined up now, joined by a hydrogen bond in between the two nitrogenous bases. Now I can also add them 
down this way. There's the house, the roof, and the phosphate group. Okay, so when we look at this diagram here, I'm just going to highlight a couple of points. This here is the phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar backbone. Over here, we have the other side of the phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar backbone of DNA. And the rungs of the ladder are formed by the nitrogenous bases across the middle through hydrogen bonding. So what are the functions of DNA? The functions of DNA are to number one, make copies of itself for cell division. So one cell becomes two cells. The body uses this function for growing and creating more muscle mass. Number two, controls cellular activity by containing the blueprint for synthesis of all proteins and enzymes within the cell. And number three, it is able to mutate in order to provide raw material for natural selection in order for evolution to occur. Okay, let's move on and get really into a good description of DNA. So DNA is a right-handed double helix. So you can see the double helix down here. There's one side and there's the other side. It's composed of the sugar phosphate backbone. So this is the sugar, face sugar phosphate backbone that we just traced out here. And the rungs of the ladder are the nitrogenous bases. And the nitrogenous bases are adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine in DNA. So here's the rungs of the ladder of the DNA molecule. And continuing on all the way down. The sugar used in DNA is deoxyribose. All DNA is double-stranded, and the location of DNA is in the nucleus of the cell. Okay, let's move on to RNA now. So I'm going to draw out some RNA for you here, just to keep things straight about the differences. So again, we have the phosphate group. We have our house here. And then we have our nitrogenous base. Now you may be asking, well, that looks exactly like a nucleotide in a DNA. So how are they different? The reason they're different is because the sugar has an extra OH here at the bottom. Phosphate group, and there's our house again, and nitrogenous base, and our little OH here down at the bottom. Now RNA, when two nucleotides come together and form RNA, it's going to look like this. Phosphate group, house, base. Our little OH sticking off the bottom. And then another phosphate group, house, and then nitrogenous base and OH sticking off the bottom. And then another phosphate group, house with the roof, nitrogenous base and OH sticking off the bottom. So you can see here, we've got the sugar, or sorry, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, backbone, again forming the single strand of RNA. So the functions of RNA are to, number one, create proteins or enzymes, and it's also involved in protein synthesis, which we're going to learn about further on in Biology 12. So let's really get into the description of DNA or RNA here. RNA is composed of the sugar phosphate backbone located here in the diagram. The rungs of the ladder are nitrogenous bases, which include adenine, cytosine, guanine. And the difference also between DNA and RNA is uracil. Remember back in DNA that that was replaced by thymine. The sugar is ribose. RNA is single-stranded. The location in the cell of RNA is in the nucleus as well as the cytoplasm. And there are three types of RNA, messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and ribosomal RNA. And we're going to learn further about those three types when we get into protein synthesis, protein synthesis later on. Okay, let's look at the main differences between RNA and DNA. So first of all, we've got the sugar. 
In RNA, the sugar is ribose. In DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose. The location of RNA is in the nucleus and cytoplasm. For DNA, it's just in the nucleus. The number of strands, one for RNA and two for DNA. And the bases present in each of them are the same except for uracil and thymine. So if we look at this visually, we can see that RNA is single-stranded and DNA is two-stranded or double-stranded. We can see the difference in bases. There's uracil and there's thymine. And those are the main things that you can see in this diagram. So that brings us to the end of comparing RNA and DNA. Now we're gonna move on to ATP. So remember, ATP is a modified nucleotide, so it's not a polymer. ATP is composed of an RNA nucleotide with an adenine base, and as well as two additional phosphate groups, which makes a total of three phosphate groups. There's one, two, three. ATP stands for adenine triphosphate. So how do you recognize ATP if you're looking at a whole bunch of molecules? Again, you always want to look for the house, but the key to knowing it's an ATP molecule is it's got three phosphate groups sticking off the end of it instead of just one. Now, the phosphate-phosphate bonds here, well, actually I'll change my highlighter here so you can see, there's a phosphate-phosphate bond, phosphate-phosphate bond, are very weak, but they're actually very energy-rich bonds. So, when the cell needs some energy, what happens is it actually breaks this outer bond here, and that phosphate gets released as well as energy, and then the ATP becomes ADP. When a phosphate bond is added back onto ADP using energy, then ATP will again store that energy for future use in the cell. This is called the ATP cycle. And it's happening over and over and over and over again constantly within the cells of our body. So that brings us to the end of nucleic acids. Let's review the main ideas. Nucleic acids are information molecules formed of DNA and RNA. And ATP is a modified nucleotide that stores energy for the cell. Now, as we come to the end of this video, there are some things that you should be able to do. Can you recognize nucleic acid? Can you draw nucleic acid? Can you compare the differences between DNA and RNA? Can you draw the ATP structure as well as the ATP cycle? And can you relate the ATP structure to its role as the energy currency of cells? If you can't quite answer any of these questions, please take a moment and rewind the video and watch the area that you need to until you have these concepts down. So that brings us to the end. Hope that helps and thanks for watching.